We've seen how to use the CSV module readers in order to actually read a CSV file. However, these readers have a lot of options that you can specify that allow you to change their behavior. So in this video, we're going to look at some of those options to try and understand how we can configure our CSV readers to best work with the particular CSV files that we have. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to continue to use the CSV module's dict reader in order to read in our CSV file as a dictionary of dictionaries. However, we're going to explore some of the options that you can pass to dict reader and also reader that will modify its behavior. So let's take a look. We have, again, our function dict parse. However, it's a little different. You'll notice right away that it takes more arguments, right? I've added separator, quote, and quote strategy. Well, what are those? Well, in order to understand that, we have to look at how we're using dictreader now. So you can see here, when we call csv.dictreader, we continue to pass the CSV file. That should be obvious. We need to actually have a file in order to read the data. We're going to continue to set skip initial space to be true, and then we're going to set a couple of other parameters as well. Okay, first we set delimiter to be separator. Separator is an argument of dict parse, and this needs to be a single character string. Now remember, a comma separated values file doesn't necessarily have to have its values separated by commas. You can use any character to separate the values. And the delimiter here indicates to the dict reader which character you would like to use to indicate the separator between columns in a row. So when we pass in a single character, it could be a comma, it could be a period, semicolon, whatever we'd like, that now becomes the delimiter that the dict reader looks for. Similarly, in a CSV file, you can use whatever character you'd like as the quote character. So quote char here gets set to a string with a single character in it that is the quote character, right? And so we're passing in quote to dict parse and then setting quote char to be quote. Now notice we didn't have to do this before. Why? Well, the delimiter by default is a comma and the quote char by default is the double quote character. So the most commonly used values, the comma and the double quote, are the defaults for the CSV modules readers, and so if we're going to use those, we don't need to pass anything. But if we have CSV files that use different characters, we do have to modify that, and the CSV module gives us the capability of doing so. Now I'm going to ignore quoting for the time being. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Now I would like you to also notice something else here. I'm not just returning the table now. I'm returning the table and CSV reader dot field names. If you think about how the dict reader operates, you must realize that it knows what the names of all the fields are. When it reads the first row in the file, it uses those as the names of all of the columns. And so it has that information and it has it in order. It has to have it in order because when it reads each row, it needs to know which column corresponds to which column name. So it does have a list internally of all of the field names, and we can access it as csvreader.fieldnames. So this allows us not to know ahead of time what the names of all the fields in a particular file are. So we can return both the table and the list of field names. Now we're going to change our print table function slightly. It's going to take field names as an argument. That way our print table function is not hard coded to my one table of average high temperatures in cities. Okay, now we get the field names as an argument. We use the first name in the field names as the main key value for the rows, and the remainder of the field names are the subsequent columns in the table. And if you look through the code here, you'll see that's exactly how I'm using that, and I leave it to you to explore that further. Now let's actually use our new functions here. Okay. And I still want you to ignore that last argument for the moment. Let's just run this and see what happens. I actually printed out the field names first, and you can see that we do have 
a list of all the field names and it is in the order that it was in in the file. So that's nice. I don't need to keep track of that in some constant tuple somewhere. And if you look at the file, it printed out nicely, exactly as we have been printing them out before. This continues to be high temp.csv that we've seen time and again at this point. Now let's go back and look at how we called it. We pass city as the key field. That's how we're going to index the rows. And then we pass the comma as the separator and the double quote character as quote. And then finally we have the CSV quote minimal. Hmm, what's going on there? Well, it didn't seem to do anything, so I'm just gonna continue to ignore it for the time being. Let's now move on to hightemp2.csv. And let's run that. Everything looks good here. But wait a minute, why are the numbers all of a sudden floating point numbers? Before they were just integers, which is what they looked like in the file, right? I'm going to open up high temp two for you to see. Those are just integers, right? If we look at the average high temperature for January in Houston, we see that it's 62 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an integer. But now when we look in the printout here, it says 62.0. Well, this is what that quote strategy is doing, okay? When we pass something to quoting in one of the readers, you're telling it what it means when it sees quotes. So notice that before we call use csv.quote minimal, and now we're using csv.quote non-numeric. What quote minimal means is that the quotes are really only being used when necessary. They're quoting column values that have special characters in them, for instance. And so most of the columns are not going to be quoted. And under this strategy, the readers assume that all of the columns are strings. Everything is parsed as a string. Now you can't actually see that when we printed out the table before, but when it prints out the number 62, that is actually a string. And I encourage you to add some code in here to print out the types of things and convince yourself that in fact that is a string. Now when I use csv.quote non-numeric and I pass that to quoting when I called one of the readers, that's gonna do something different. That's going to say that every column that is not a numeric value must be quoted. Therefore, when I parse the file, I can assume that something that is not quoted must be a number. And so it therefore parses it as a floating point number. And now you can see that we got floating point numbers for all of the numbers that were in the original file. Now I haven't actually used any files that have different separators or quote characters. So I've created hightemp3.csv here, which again is the same exact data. The only difference here is that the quote character is now a single quote and the separator I'm using is a space. So you can see up here in the first row, I have city surrounded by single quotes, then a space, then jan surrounded by single quotes. And that's continued throughout this file. So if we try to parse it, we need to be careful with what we're going to do here. So let's first try and parse it using comma as a separator and double quote as the quote character and see what happens. Hmm, we get an error. Python has all kinds of trouble dealing with this. It's trying to convert things that aren't numbers into numbers and so on. Okay, so let's actually fix this, change the separator to be a space and let's change the quote character to be single quote and run that and see what happens. All right, now we're able to parse our file. In this video, I've shown you some of the flexibility that the CSV modules readers have. I showed you things in the context of the dict reader, but they also work for the reader as well. I strongly encourage you to play around with this code and, and convince yourself that you understand how it works and read the documentation for the CSV module. It'll give you a better appreciation for these options and the other options that you have available to you in the CSV module.